certainly an honor each and every week. And, uh, Coach, it's it's great to be able to welcome you into the program, sir. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing about as well as I can. I, I'm sort of a blessed man. I was I had good good attention, and uh, old Hart quit beating there for a couple of times, and they got me started back, and care flatted me on the uh, uh, helicopter over to Dallas, and I got good attention, and and left there and went back to a m for their their celebration, and I'm looking forward to going back to Tuscaloosa. Coach, and, and, and certainly we want to talk about that, but let me ask you, I mean, do you, do you feel better, though? I mean, do you, you feel like they may have corrected the problem? Well, I don't know whether they corrected the problem or not, but they basically say as long as I take the medicine that I'm supposed to take and, and live the way I'm supposed to live, that I shouldn't have another one. Now, I, I may have one. You know, some people have five and six uh, uh Deals that they they've got to have replaced, and uh, but a heart attack is is worse than all of it because that's that's what you have the other things for. But anyway, I'm I, I had good attention, and I'm I'm doing about as well as I can, really. In fact, I got some ice cream uh, from Coach Saban, and and man, was it good. Oh, Co- Coach Saban sent you some ice cream. Now, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he did, and he said uh, to, to the cat. I guess he said I had nine lives, and I've used up three or four of them. Wow. But anyway, I got it today at noon, and have thoroughly enjoyed it. He's he's always been very kind to me, and, and I, I certainly appreciate what all he does. Well, and I, I know you didn't you didn't hear it, but uh, last week uh, on his coach's show, uh, he talked about how much you meant to him. And, and uh, you know, Coach, uh, you, you scared us all in Tuscaloosa. i got to be honest with you. I mean, you had us all a little bit worried about you, and – uh, there was a lot of prayers going up from Tuscaloosa. Everywhere I went, uh, former players, current play. I mean, e- everybody was asking, how's Coach Tallings doing? Have you got a report? Got a report? I mean, I got a, probably 100 text messages, and uh, just want to let you know that we're thinking about it, you, and uh, certainly you have a special place in all of our hearts here in Tuscaloosa. Well, I, I appreciate every one of them. I appreciate every telephone call and every prayer because uh, it all makes a difference. And uh, as of right now, I went to the doctor this morning, and he just, bottom line, he couldn't believe how strong I was and how well I was doing. But anyway, I'm I'm, I'm going to uh, Birmingham Thursday, and then I'll be in, in uh, Tuscaloosa uh, then uh, Saturday. Awesome, awesome. Well, Coach, uh, we want to spend a lot of time saluting that 1992 team because that's one of the reasons why you will be here. But let's go back and celebrate that 50th anniversary of that 1967 uh, Cotton Bowl victory there for Texas A&M. You had a chance to be in College Station. What was that like to be able to connect with a lot of your former players? You know, the, the reason that I wanted, I left the hospital and went and got on a plane and went to uh, a College Station. They didn't really want me to go, but I said, now listen to what I'm telling you. I said, most of these players are all over 70. My chances of seeing them again it's going to be sort of slim. The game's for the players, not for the coach. And I want to show my respect one more time, and I'm going to go. So uh, even though they didn't want me to go, I went, and everything worked out fine. And, and as soon as the uh, uh, pregame was over, well, at the halftime, then we, we flew back to college, back to Paris. And, and uh, but I'm really looking forward to to going back to Tuscaloosa. You know, 50 years ago, uh, we weren't as good a football team as we were at, at Alabama, and which made the team a little special because they were the great majority of them all graduated, and and not a lot of them played pro ball. And they were just just good people, good human beings, and worked hard and and turned out well, and ended up beating Alabama in the Cotton Bowl and. First time Alabama's been in the Cotton Bowl, ain't been in the Cotton Bowl in, I think, 25 or 30 years. So it was a big deal. Coach, uh, we have spent a lot of time this week, and we've got other players. We had George Teague on yesterday to help us sort of honor that 1992 team, and we've got some other guests that's going to help us uh, as we travel throughout the week. But when I say 1992 team, what what is the first thing that comes to your mind about that 92 team as a unit? Well, it goes a little further than that. When I think of that team, I think of a, a team that won 28 games in a row. And, you know, that, uh, that if there's one 
thing that I'm really proud of in my career. It's it's coaching at Alabama. They won 28 in a row. Then we tied one, and and that sort of broke the streak. But uh, we had good football players that played hard and stayed healthy, and uh, uh, had some lots of good players, but not a whole lot of what you call quote superstars. Just a lot of good football players that played hard and and stayed healthy, and that's what I think about. I think, but but I do think about that group winning 28 in a row. As we move forward, we're talking with Coach Stallings, and uh, yesterday I got a, a memo from the SEC and from the University of Alabama. You're going to be inducted uh, into the SEC Legends. Uh, they're going to honor you at the championship game, and I, I think you've made an appearance uh, for the last couple of years at this uh, SEC championship game, but this is another recognition uh, for your well, coaching. Mo- most of the time, the, those codes are players, and I, I really appreciate the honor and the fact that I'll be there and, and play – pay respect to the teams and so forth. But, yeah, I'm very appreciative of that award. Coach, when you go back uh, to to Miami in that 1992 game, I was listening to some of the video clips, and uh, I, I want to go back to the, the strategy that you guys had to be able to showcase Gino Toretta and his skill set. But you guys had a perfect game plan. And coach Teague was – Coach Teague, he's now a coach, uh, and he said he reminds himself – daily of you, some of the ways that he handles his players in Plano, Texas. Uh, I called him Coach Teague, but George uh, was talking yesterday at the game plan that you guys designed for Gino Toretta and that Miami offense. Well, you know, you win games with players, not schemes. Uh, we, had a, we had a good scheme. We threw them a little off balance, but uh, we were able to run the football and stop the run and uh, run the giveaway, takeaway, and and confused with Toretta and got some interceptions. Uh, but it was just a tough, well-played football game. Anybody that would ask me, I said that we were a better football team than Miami. Nobody would ask me. I, I, that, that, that sort of volunteered. I'd do uh, a television show or something like that, and all they won't talk about is Miami. I said, now, I'm just telling you. Alabama's better football team than Miami. Nobody paid attention to that, but it proved out I was right. <laughs> I guess you and Corky Simpson was uh, one of the very few that uh, said, hey, this team's going to win a national title. <laughs> Corky, I think he picked us every week, and he was out of, um, I think, out of uh, Arizona. And uh, he, was, he was the main man in our parade. And, uh, yeah, I, I, never, I don't think I'd ever met Corky before then, but uh, he picked us every week, and uh, he was the only one that did. Yeah, no doubt. And 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 I remember him walking down the parade. You guys had a custom-made jersey for him, uh, and it said Simpson on the back. And I was like, now, who is this guy? Is this guy a former player? <laughs> no, he's a media guy that picked Alabama to win it all. <laughs> yeah, he he uh, picked us, and uh, he hung in there and caught a lot of heat from various play people. But anyway, he picked us, and we, we had a – it was a good but, – the bottom line of the 92 team is we stayed healthy. So everybody started the first game, started the last game. And when you do that and you get a little bit better every week, you ought to be good to the latter part of the year. Coach, let me go back to 1991, if if I can. And uh, a lot of players have talked about, you know, that, that Florida game. And that didn't work out for you guys. But that did that serve as motivation for that 92 team? I don't know. I was I was thoroughly embarrassed. I know that we got beat like maybe thirty points. I'm not exactly sure. We played them in in uh, Florida, and uh, uh, it, it it no, it wasn't a motivation for the team, but it it you know, that got my dander up. I'll tell you that. Well, I remember hearing Antonio Langham talk about it, and I believe it was John Copeland, and and, and talking about you know how they they, they promised each other that they would never allow that to happen, and I don't guess they did uh, when you look at what they were able to accomplish. And those are some great ones when you think about Copeland and Curry. Oh, they, they, nobody had two better defensive ends than we did. Uh, uh, Curry and Copeland were just outstanding, and people had a hard time running on them, and they could pressure the quarterback. So, uh, I, actually, we led the nation in defense in two or three different categories. And, and a little-known fact, Somebody sent me this that uh, 
the 92 defense was voted the best defense of all times. And that's, that was about six or seven years ago when they voted that. Uh, but they, by two different polls, they were voted the greatest defense that's ever played. And so I'm I'm very proud of that. No, I've read the analytics uh, when we talk about that, that 92 team. And looking at the numbers, uh, it, it certainly uh, – I always debate – uh, the the one ninety two and then looking at the numbers nineteen sixty one uh, was it was another legendary Alabama uh, season with Leroy Jordan and all those guys here so uh, it certainly ninety two has made their their stake of, of claim when we talk about one of the great defenses what did you see from Alabama against Texas A and M last week coach say that again now what did you see from Alabama for, in, in Texas A and M in that game in College Station well I I didn't see a whole lot of the game to tell you the truth. Uh, uh, I, I was moving sort of slowly, and and I, they had me down there about eight or ten minutes before the half started. And as soon as the half was over, well, I went back and caught a plane and, and flew back to, uh, uh, to Paris. But, uh, uh, you know, people sometimes want to be a little critical of Coach Saban. They don't understand the pressure that he's under. You know, when you win year in, year after year after year after year, game after game after game. Now, they're not satisfied with beating somebody 9, 10, 12 points. They want to beat you 25 or 30 points. And I, But I, I thought that, that A&M played a little bit better than I thought that they did, but Alabama won the game, and that's what you do. That's what you play for. Well, Coach, I was debating uh, these callers have been holding for like 30 and 40 minutes. Uh, you mind taking a couple of calls here, Coach? Well, I, I, I don't mind at all. Okay. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good and sitting in the shade and, and <laughs> ready to talk a little football. Absolutely. 205-342-9904. Uh, as always, Red, you're on first with Coach Stallings. Just found out that the good Lord don't need you up there right now. He needs you down here to bring a blessing to us. Well, I, I thank you. you. You're right. He's got something in mind for me, and, and uh, I don't know what it is. I hope I can live up to it. Well, you bring a blessing to us always, Coach, and uh, even people that you never even get to talk to, you bring a blessing to them in the work you do. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, Red. Coach, we're going to have to give you a new nickname. We're going to have to start calling you John Wayne, because <laughs> you are so enough to grit, buddy. <laughs> well... Uh, they couldn't believe how uh, the doctors couldn't believe how strong I was and how I've recovered and so forth. So uh, I, I've worked all my life, and uh, uh, so I, I was in relatively good shape. You don't want to have a, a heart attack. That's one thing you don't want. To, you don't mind having to have a stent put in, a replacement, or something like that. But a heart attack, they refer to that as what is maker, and and I was very fortunate that. Uh, the people were there at the right time to get my heart back beating and get me to the airport, to, to the hospital. And so I had good attention, and I'm very appreciative of it. Yes, sir. Well, Coach, I'm going to test your memory then after all this. Back all right. when, you, when you left Johnson, all y'all left Johnson and went back to College Station, was uh, there much of a change in practice? Did they do what? Was that much of a difference in practice when y'all left Johnson and went back to College Station? Well, the the, the first game we played, we, we after Johnson, all that publicity, we played Texas Tech, and lost the game forty-one to nine. And uh, so I'll assure you that the practice the next day was a picnic compared to Junction. I mean, we. Uh, <laughs> We started to ask. We played both ways, and we put the ball on about the 18-yard line. Coach Brown said when the game was over, the ball was on the 18-yard line, and we're going to take up where we left off. And we drove the ball length of field, drove it back, and then we turned around and played defense. So uh, I'll assure you that as hard as Junction was, it was nothing compared to the practice after we played Texas Tech. Wow. That, that's something else there, Coach. Well, that's what made you the man that you are today, though, Coach. I know it was hard back then, but that's what made you the man today, I believe. Well, it helped me. No question about that. Thank you, Red. Tell Miss Ruth Ann hello, Coach. And God bless I will. Y'all. Thank you, Red.
Absolutely. Uh, we've had a lot of calls here waiting at 205-342-9904. We have one line available if you want to jump on with Coach Stallings, 205-342-9904. JK, you're up next right here on the game. Hey, Coach Stallings. Hey, Ryan, how you doing today? Good, JK. How are you this afternoon? Hey, I'm sitting in the shade drinking some sweet tea with you, Coach. Uh, I'm, I'm having an easy day the rest of the day. Coach, really good I, I thought you, you Texas a I thought your Texas A&M Aggies played above their head Saturday. I thought they played a, a good game and had a good defensive plan against Alabama's run. And they, they, uh, I've thought about – go they ahead. Held them, I think they beat them by like nine points, and uh, uh, they they were in the game to right at the last, and it was not one of the Alabama's better games, but they won the football game, and that's what you play for. Well, my theory is coach at Texas A&M played above their heads because uh, their their national championship team was there with you with them. And if you're going to make the effort to get there and that team's going to make the effort to get there, you're darn right. They're going to put on a show. And I thought they put on a darn fine show short of beating uh, Alabama. They they played ex- probably, probably the best game that they played all year. Hopefully uh, they can play that well uh, this week when they they play Arkansas. When they, not A&M plays Florida. Uh, Coach, uh, there's a possibility that if Arkansas's uh, quarterback doesn't start, that Alabama could be looking at a six foot seven, two hundred and seventy pound quarterback. You ever played against that? anything like that? Arkansas's second string quarterback is six seven and two seventy. You ever no. played against the, a quarterback that big? <clears throat> no, but I'd, I'd I'd say that he wouldn't have much of a running threat. Uh, you. He probably runs some back tackling board to make over for us. No, I've never seen a quarterback that day in college football. Is there any special defense that you'd put on him? Would you would you blitz more or stunt more on somebody like that? Yeah, I, I, I was coaching now. I'd blitz more anyway. I wouldn't give the quarterback time to throw the football. So uh, if I was playing against him, I wouldn't I'd do the same thing. Coach, it's always a blessing to talk to you. I hope you keep doing well. You look like you were having a mighty fine time in Texas this past Saturday. I was so glad to see you smiling and enjoying yourself. I'm going to get well, off the phone know, and let some other callers call in. When I look back at those guys, you know, the, nearly all of them were over 70 years old. That's 50-year anniversary. And uh, uh, nearly, I'd say 95% of those guys were extremely successful and whatever business they selected, and uh, it was a joy to be around them. Coach, uh, John wanted me to ask you on the air, what did you tell the 92 team after you had won the national title? Do you remember your post-game speech to them and, and, and what you told them after winning the national title? I don't remember. I remember what Johnny said to me. Uh, <laughs> but the game was over, and we was in a, in a little room between the two of us, and, and Johnny looked at me, and he said, Pop, good job. But as far as what I remember telling the players, uh, I really don't remember. Then we were all extremely excited, emotional, and we always have pregame prayer. We don't never pray that we'll win a game, but we pray that we can escape the game without injury. And we're thankful for the outcome of the game. So I know we ended the game uh, when we went to the locker room. We had a prayer. And it was the first team to ever go 13-0 that 1992 National Championship season, the first team to ever win 13 football games. Uh, Coach, we're going to let you go, and uh, safe travels over to Tuscaloosa. We're so excited that you're going to be able to make it. Uh, I know that you were looking forward to that uh, trip to Texas A&M, and and you were looking forward to the trip to Tuscaloosa. Uh, We cannot wait to see inside that stadium. Now, Ryan, I'm I'm going to do a little uh, commercial here for you. Yeah, please. Thursday. Okay. Thursday to Bright Star. Uh, I'm raising money uh, for Johnny's house. Okay. Uh, that's the place in AT where the uh, little special children have a place to live and eat and so forth. And and we're trying to raise $100,000. And so I'm going to go there and, and, and speak to those group. I don't know. We've got 50, 60 people already lined up to go. But if anybody doesn't have anything to do and, and they're looking for a, a a good meal, and and I'll give a little rundown on the team. It's a bright star, and they're in Bessemer, Alabama. Okay. Well, Coach, I, I tell you what I'll do. I, I'll make sure that I get more information and, and not just talk about it today, but I'll talk about it tomorrow too. So you're going to be coming in 
Uh, do you have a time on that for tomorrow night, Coach? Say that again. What, what time is it tomorrow night that you're going to be doing no, that? No, it's, it's tomorrow at noon. Tomorrow at noon. Okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow at noon in Bessemer, Alabama. Okay, tomorrow at – so at lunchtime. So uh, – Last time, correct. Okay. Well, well, Coach, we'll certainly uh, talk about that. And uh, uh, it, it's great to hear your voice, and I'm glad you're doing so well and, and uh, look forward to seeing you inside the stadium on Saturday. Thank you, Coach. Right. I'm excited about just being back in Tuscaloosa one more time.